Welcome to Silent Symptoms, a Black mental health podcast. I am your host, Kataso Fridge, a Florida-based therapist. This podcast focuses on mental health, stigmas, and social injustices that affect the Black community. This podcast was created to bring awareness about mental health and can be used as an educational guide, but this is not to be used as a replacement for seeking help from a therapist. I hope you enjoy the podcast. Hi, welcome to another episode of Silent Symptoms, a Black Mental Health Podcast. Today, I'm going to be talking about an interesting phenomenon. So it's something that we have probably felt and internalized. It is something that I feel like every individual has felt but has never spoken it or they have spoken it but didn't have the definition for it. This one is called the imposter syndrome, the imposter phenomenon. So whichever one you may so choose to use, this is not an official DSM diagnosis. So what is imposter syndrome, you may wonder. So imposter syndrome is feeling like you're fraudulent even though you have achieved a level of success and you have put in the work and all the effort that you have made to get to that level you feel like you haven't really made it or you don't deserve to be there for whatever wild reason you feel like that and i won't say that you know a certain level of success determines if you're gonna feel like you're an imposter so there are pretty much a lot of people ranging from college students. So some college students feel like, okay, I got into this prestigious college, but I didn't deserve it. How did I even get to the point where I'm in this college, I'm in this amazing university amongst these this wonderful staff? I'm fraudulent. I didn't deserve it. Even though they have a 4.0 GPA, They've worked really hard, but just the thought process of it makes them feel fraudulent. Another example is that, you know, when someone like, let me use these two individuals as an example. So let's talk about Maya Angelou, American poet. She's a singer, author, just a lot of things that she has done during her time. She described herself as feeling like she didn't deserve, that um, she was fraudulent in a sense, but her work speaks for itself. How can an individual like that who's achieved such success and a lot of people have seen her rise and she still felt, she still felt like she wasn't there yet or she was in over her head and fraudulent. Another example is, you know, Albert Einstein. So a genius, someone that helped advance science, like an amazing physicist. He brought his talents from Germany all the way to the United States, made, you know, such a difference in groundbreaking research. But he felt like he was faking it. How can a scientist fake it? He felt like all the work that he put in did not deserve any recognition. So when you think about that, you're like, what? But it's a real thing. So feeling like an imposter or feeling like you're fraudulent does not make you fraudulent. So it's just the thought process of feeling like this type of attention, why me? Why do I deserve it? Why not the next person? I'm just as good as her. So that thinking puts you in a state of mind of feeling like I need to do better. So most people feel like, okay, their level of success is not enough if they have imposter syndrome. For an example, some you know individuals will be, first generation graduates. They may feel like, I don't deserve to be here. I faked it till I made it and I became the first graduate. They don't see that. Number one, they apply for college or university. Number two, they got in. They did all their homework. And they deserve that graduation. So in their mind, it's like, okay, well, I don't deserve 
any of it. I'm not worthy. And um, from, you know, imposter syndrome, this is nothing connected to anything um, that has to do with mental health. It's just the state of mind. So what I mean by that is that, number one, it does not mean that, you know, you are insecure or have low self-esteem and it's not directly connected to anxiety or depression so this is just a unique you know feeling in its own right so you know how it sounds like somebody who has imposter syndrome is not secure within themselves that's not true so like for example for myself um today i actually experience imposter syndrome so i am actually going through this training for child parent psychotherapy i've been doing it for a couple of months and we had our second training i don't know why i did this for some crazy wild reason they were asking if that we can have if they can have volunteers for people to present in person because a lot of people have been presenting over the phone and only a select few elected to present in person so my crazy little idea i went ahead and said okay i'll present in person so i'm like okay So at that point, I'm like, okay, I'm confident. I have all my stuff together. I know what I'm doing with this case. So would you have so what I had to do was present on a case that I've been working on. I had to share when I started and what I've done with the family using that specific model that we call child parent psychotherapy, or you'll hear me say CPP for short. So, you know, there are people who went before me. I went on the second day and I was the very last person so you can imagine how you know scared I was feeling how anxious I was feeling because I'm thinking man all these people are so amazing and then here I am trying to be on that level and little did I know that I'm there so everyone had to share where they are in the phase with the client So I was the only person who was in the termination phase of the case that I had. Some of the people had, you know, individual who started at the same time as me and they were still at the beginning. So I'm like, am I doing something wrong? I'm questioning all these things. So right before I go, a child psychologist went before me. My anxiety was at the roof. I didn't know what to think. She did amazing. So I'm like, okay, I know, you know, I put in the work, what I've done with my client. We've accomplished so much and the case was so complex. So I'm having all these thoughts. So I'm like, okay, once I started to present, I was super nervous. Okay. We had 30 something people in that class. And when I tell you guys, I didn't know what to do. When I was presenting, I'm like, I'm, I was super nervous. I felt my lips quivering. I heard my voice crackling the entire time. Talk about being in your head. So as I was presenting my case and people were giving me feedback and we're talking about, you know, the processes that I have taken in order for me to take, you know, this little boy from being, um, you know, from having trauma to helping them dissect and dig through all of that trauma and move forward not to say that's going to com- be completely gone but how to alleviate the trauma for the child so i'm sharing my case and then at the end like this whole time i'm presenting i'm like i'm so fraudulent like i don't know what i'm doing like Am I messing this kid up? You know, all these different thoughts that I'm having in my head because I'm comparing myself to other people who've gone before me and they're great. And I'm not insecure in what I was doing, but I was just questioning, you know, where I was as a clinician in that moment. So moving forward, I'm done presenting and everybody's like clapping for me. Like, I'm like, what? So I'm like, I don't deserve that. I felt like, okay, I skated through the presentation. Um, I was just 
faking it till I made it until the end. So the lady to the left of me, after I was done presenting, I was I was so nervous. She was like, you were what? You were nervous. I was like, yeah, you didn't hear my voice crackling. And then did you, didn't you see my lips quivering? She was like, there's no way. I would have never known. She was like, you've done so amazing. Fast forward. So as, you know, we're getting ready to leave because I was the last person to go. The guy to my right stops me. He didn't know I was nervous or anything. So he was like, wow, you are doing an amazing job with this family. He was like, if I could be half, you know, the clinician that you are or present half as well as you have, I'd feel like I'm doing the best that I can and I've gone a long way. He was like, you look so young, but when she starts speaking, you speak so eloquently. And I'm just like, me? <laughs> me so all these compliments I was getting and then I was stopped by the um people who are running the class and I'm like they're telling me how great I'm doing with this family and then I'm like I'm just so phony but then I'm not giving myself credit for all the work that I've put in like I have evidence you know that I'm actually doing the work I've seen the difference from the beginning to the end, but I still manage to feel like I'm not deserving. And, you know, having imposter syndrome, you know, doesn't take over your life. If you allow it to, it will. But then, you know, a lot of us internalize the feelings of feeling like an imposter or like a fraud, even when we have evidence showing that we've done great things. So, we have to actually get rid of that thought process and start giving ourselves credit for what we have done to get where we are. And, you know, you know, college students feel like it. Millionaires feel like it. That's why some of them become overachievers. So they feel like when I reach that first million, I'm going to be the most happiest man or woman in the world. And they get to the million and they feel like, how did I even get here? I don't even deserve this million. Maybe if I get to five million, a hundred million, then I won't feel like such a fraud. Then I won't have to feel these feelings of, you know, I'm not good enough. Because then once I, leave, uh, once I reach a certain level of success, then I'm there. And they don't get to that point because those feelings still exist. And that's why some people say money will never make you happy. But then your state of mind will always get you to a place of feeling great about yourself. So some of the ways that we could debunk feeling like an imposter when we have proven that we are not fraudulent and we're not all the way fake. No fakes over here. So number one, how to combat feeling like you're an imposter. How to get rid of those thought process. You have to be able to verbally acknowledge that you have these feelings of impostering. Feeling like a fraud. Feeling like you're in above your head. Number two, having that conversation with someone else who you look up to, who you feel like is successful, and see what the dialogue is. Nine times out of ten, they probably feel like an imposter. So having those conversations can make you feel like you're not the only one. And then that could give you a clear picture of what you're feeling like and how to move forward from that. Number three, you need to be able to have conversations with people. And once the conversation is done, being able to take that compliment. Sometimes we don't allow ourselves to be happy about our accomplishments, to be proud of ourselves, because there's always going to be more work to be done. 
but why can't we appreciate where we are? If somebody's like, girl, I love your podcast, like you were doing the thing. You know my resp- what my response usually is? Really? Do you think so? And the whole time I'm thinking about all the words that I mispronounced, all the pauses that I took, or found like a million different things that are wrong with the podcast, but I'm getting all the, this positive feedback. So we have to allow ourselves to get those compliments. And then the last thing to do, don't internalize those feelings. Once you internalize those feelings, it causes a problem. So you've gotten this compliment and you should walk like you own it. Have a little pep in your step. So now everybody has told you, Girl, your podcast is great. Your podcast is amazing. You're making such a difference in mental health. And I need to be like, thank you so much. And then market myself as such. Market myself as great. Speak to people as if I've reached that peak of success. And my peak of success may be having um, people, like 50 something people watch my podcast. But treating the situation as if I have a million people watching my video. So accepting those compliments and walking in my truth. Because honestly, you need to feel like you're the stuff. Because you have earned it. You have shown a track record that you're not fraudulent. That is all in the mind. And you have to think about the greats. My Angelou and Albert Einstein actually thought they didn't deserve any of the things that they got, all that recognition. But look at all the work that they have put in for many years. So remember, you are not an imposter. You deserve everything that is coming for you and everything that you have accomplished and everything that people tell you you are, you are amazing. So for all the people that are feeling like imposters, We are not imposters. I also have to tell myself, you deserve it. You're not an imposter. You're fabulous. You're amazing. Your podcast is the best thing smoking. And why I'm saying this is because people come up to me and tell me about the different things that I've done to impact them. Even if it's just one person. That one person is enough to keep you going. So remember why you started doing what you were doing and let those feelings go of feeling like an imposter. I hope you enjoyed this podcast. You guys have a great, great rest of your day, rest of your night, wherever you may show. Um, I hope you guys... Have a great, great night or day. You know what? Cut. Thank you for tuning in. Please be sure to like, share, and subscribe to our podcast. You can catch us on Anchor and all your favorite media streams. Follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube at Silent Symptoms Podcast. Let us know if you have any feedback or topics that you would like to hear. 